Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are talking graduated ND and how to make your skies on your landscape shots look amazing. Shooting landscapes and beautiful wide open spaces is a really powerful way to locate your narrative in its location and tell something about the world in which the story takes place. The difficulty with this is that more often than not, the sky, even at dusk, is several stops brighter than the ground it's illuminating. Now you can try and deal with this by adding a gradient in post and bringing down the exposure of the sky over time. This works if you're shooting raw and you have a lot of control over the latitude. But if the sun is at all visible, um, or you have those really bright clouds, um, you almost always end up with blown out highlights, uh, which kind of fractures the, um, the illusion. Another solution would be to shoot two exposures to lock off your camera and shoot one exposure for the sky, one exposure for the ground, and combine them in post. The issue with this is that unless you match your camera movements exactly, you're sort of stuck with a static shot. There is a way to get amazing looking skies that aren't too bright in your establishing location landscape cinematography, and it's been around for 50 years. In fact, Ridley Scott, master of cinema, has been using this since his very first feature film, The Duelists. Now, neural density filters is pretty well understood. It's like sunglasses for your lens or your camera. There are a couple of different ways you can apply them. The C200 has internal ND, so does the Ari Alexa, meaning there's a tiny little, um, piece of plastic or glass that comes down in front of the sensor and you can vary it from four to six to eight stops. You can also get ones that screw on the front of your lens or you can get ones that drop down into a matte box. But how do you ND the sky without NDing the ground? The solution is the graduated neural density filter. You can get them in different gradients, you can get them in uh, different strengths, you can get them tinted blue or orange or straw. This one is a three stop half neural density filter. How you use them is you get yourself a matte box uh, like this one. Uh, I've taken the camera off so we can see all the way through. You typically have a, uh, one just that just slides in and a second one that rotates. Matte boxes come in different sizes. This one is a 5.65 inch um, rectangular. And what I'm gonna do is load the filter into the um, filter tray. And now I can drop that in to the filter tray and you'll see that now the top of the um, image is has more ND than the bottom of the image. I can adjust this somewhat by sliding it in or out or by rotating the filter around to get different effects and to customize where the ND appears and where the gradient appears depending on what I want my shot to be. If you're shooting on a Super 35 camera um, like the C200, you actually do have a little bit more flexibility because the camera only takes the middle part of the lens. Um, you're able to get no ND or all ND or something in between. This lets you get amazing deep brooding skies while still exposing your ground and subject correctly. And you can also pan and sometimes even um, tilt while still keeping the sky dark and the subject bright. In this shot from Kingdom of Heaven, Ridley Scott uses it at an angle, so a, you know, a diagonal 45, to go with the space they're photographing. You can see it travels across the frame and you know, kind of maybe gets a couple of people uh, way too dark on the way, but in the greater scheme of things, you don't notice it. Graduated ND is a really great tool to start thinking about your image in zones and how to expose different parts of the image at different values. I've even used it vertically to expose um, someone inside at the correct exposure while also getting a um, correctly exposed exterior, which was six or seven stops brighter. You don't need to absolutely nail the exposure in both zones. You just need to bring the highlights down into the range of the camera so they're not blown out and there's information there that you can recover then in post. That's how I look at graduated NDs in a matte box. Um, Ridley Scott loves to use them, like I've said, and it's sort of become one of his signature looks. I encourage you to experiment with them, find your own way of using graduated ND or the own way of capturing powerful visuals that have a signature all of your own. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, you can find links to this stuff in the description. Leave your questions in the comments and I will see you next time.